This news update is brought to you by Grab somebody and tell them hello It's Wednesday, August the 19th, 2015, and this is your Barbados Today Morning News Update. I'm Emmanuel Joseph. Thanks for joining us. We begin with news that the island's Chief Justice, Sir Marston Gibson, will face a judge in his own court next month when a hearing comes up on September 16th in a lawsuit filed by Queen's Counsel Vernon Smith, who accused the CJ of denying him the right to work. Smith, who is represented by Queen's Counsel Edmund King, has alleged that the Chief Justice breached many of his fundamental constitutional and human rights by barring him from representing his client in a case which came up before Sir Marston on April 14th this year. The veteran lawyer revealed that Sir Marston failed to ent enter an acknowledgement or file a defense in the matter, neither did he produce to Smith the reasons for refusing him a hearing. Attorney General Adriel Brathwaite has also been named in the lawsuit, which arose out of the Chief Justice's decision to prevent Smith from practicing law in Barbadian courts because he had not paid his annual subscription to the Barbados Bar Association. The lawyer claimed that the Chief Justice effectively disbarred him without due process after Smith was prevented from acting on behalf of Brandley Consulting Incorporated on April the 14th, a company owned by former Clico executive Leroy Paris. Smith is also seeking damages and is demanding that the Chief Justice gives his reasons in writing for refusing to hear him when he tried to represent his client. The state-owned Sanitation Service Authority has given notice of its intention to restructure the statutory body. The intent came in the form of a notice posted internally by the acting general manager, Rosalind Knight. While the contents of the memorandum did not treat to job losses, reliable sources told Barbados today that the South Depot and those in St. Philip, St. George, St. John and Upper Christ Church are to be split in two. Acting General Secretary of the National Union of Public Workers, Robin Smith, told Barbados today she doubted anyone will be retrenched. Smith said a special meeting will be held to discuss the restructuring issue as well as terms and conditions of employment for the SSA workers. No date has yet been set for those talks. Meanwhile, the union is meeting tomorrow with the SSA management to discuss the non-payment of workers who went on strike last month. And some sections of the church in Barbados have added their voices to the cries of concern over the upsurge in gun violence in the island. Chairman of the Anglican Commission on Advocacy and Social Justice, John Goddard, says the proliferation of guns on the streets is not an accident and suggested that the, any well-connected person involved should seek the transforming power of Jesus Christ and put country above avarice and power. Goddard is calling on the management of the police force to redouble their efforts to bring the culprits to justice. He is worried that those importing the guns and facilitating their sale and distribution to young people have the financial capability and connections. Lay preacher and social activist Roger Husbands is warning that if something is not done to stop this act of violence, it will get out of hand. Husbands thinks it is time authorities put measures in place to nip the violence in the bud before it's too late. And the Parkinson Memorial Secondary School has created a counterpart to the Contentious Schools Based Assessment, SBA, project of the Caribbean Examinations Council exams. Principal Jeff Broom says it's called the HBA's Home Based Assessment, which comes in the form of a publication entitled Step by Step Mathematics for Common Entrance with Answers. Broom, who is retiring next May, told a news conference yesterday that the HBS book will soon be available in all schools across Barbados. We have developed what we call the HBS, you know, people call them SBAs. 
we create what we call the HBA's Home Base Assessment. We've written a book, written a book, step by step mathematics for commenters with answers. It's, it's a joint effort, it's a joint effort between Jamaica Educational and Parkinson University. Where the book is written by me, really, but um, with the funds will be shared for our benevolent fund and stuff too. Um, and the, 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 although it was written by me, the quality control advisor is a member of our maths department, Deborah Harding Hoy. Um, so, I, you know, officially, the book has not been launched yet. Maybe. In sports, now several people were injured when scores of overzealous patrons ran onto the track. At Guyana's premier race horsing event, the Guyana Cup, over the weekend, at least one person was hospitalized. We pick up the details in this report from Royston Drakes of Capital News. For most of the day, the police kept the capacity crowd off the track. But when the Fiji event came, the anxious star fights could not be contained. Several persons were injured after they invaded the track along the final stretch of the Fiji event. At that point, Jack, in my style, one of the favorites for the race was in turn. He never finished the race. The horse ran over several turf fights. There's regional and international news after this short break. Secure your future, be financially strong. To the big story on the regional scene now, it's news of another possible scandal at an academic institution in St. Lucia. HDS News Force was on the ground when police raided the offices of American International Medical University in Groselais on Monday. The institution's director, Dr. Raj, was reportedly taken into custody for questioning over paperwork. In June, Offshore Academic Institute, American International Medical University, AMU, went on the record defending the school's integrity when red flags were raised following a litany of alleged criminal infringement by the defunct Lambert's Academy. Dr. Raju and board members vehemently denied allegations over licensing discrepancies and the legitimacy of some members of faculty. HDS News Force was given an exclusive and thorough tour of AMU's facility by the institution's director, who is reportedly now in police custody for questioning. In Trinidad now, the political parties aspiring members of parliament shelled out more than $600,000 for a chance to win a seat in parliament. The Electoral and Boundaries Commission released its final list of confirmed candidates yesterday. More than 100 contenders were approved to face the polls on September the 7th. And on the international scene, St. Mary's Medical Center in Florida announced Monday that it would permanently close its pediatric cardiothoracic surgery program. The move comes in the wake of a year-long CNN investigation, which found that from 2011 to 2013, the program had a 12.5% mortality rate for open-heart surgeries, which is more than three times the national average. At least nine babies died after having heart surgery at the hospital since the program started in 2011. A tenth baby was left paralyzed. 
Just weeks into life, this tiny baby, Layla McCarthy, needed heart surgery. Here at St. Mary's Medical Center in West Palm Beach, Florida, Dr. Michael Black performed the delicate procedure to widen Layla's narrow aorta, a defect she'd had since birth. He just made it seem like he was the best person to do this. Yes. It was uh, very like, no sweat, don't worry about it. No, it's a walk in the park. But the surgery was a disaster. I looked at her and, and her legs had started, um, they had stiffened up a lot and they started going in almost a tabletop position. After the surgery, Layla was paralyzed. Here she is today. The McCarthys had no idea that their daughter's tragedy had a disturbing backstory, one that no one had told them. Just three months before Layla's operation, a baby had died after heart surgery by Dr. Black. And five months before that, Alexander Gutierrez Mercado had died. And a month and a half before that, Kiari Sanders had passed away. And that's where we end our Barbados Today morning news update. However, you can join us again this afternoon. Until then, remember to log on to www.barbadostoday.bb, subscribe to our e-paper and email updates, or like us on Facebook. You can also catch us on iZoomi Media in bus terminals or screenplay at supermarkets and gas stations near you. Also tune into Channel 101 on Lime TV and Mix 96.9 FM to get all the latest news and sports. I'm Emmanuel Joseph. Have a fantastic day.